Welcome to the library trustee meeting for February 3rd, 2022. And we'll jump right in for public participation. So we have Declan uh, online and um, Ann taking minutes. So Declan's here, he applied for the Ray Grandy Scholarship and he's here to talk about himself, so. Welcome, and before Declan. we have, welcome Declan. Um, Hi Declan. I'm glad you could join us tonight. <laughs> Sam, before you jump in, we jump into talking to Declan, I was just hoping you could give us a quick um, rundown of what the library needs for volunteers for the scholarship program. Do you have any idea of what, sure. how that will work in the hours and time and stuff like that? Sure, so Declan's actually volunteered for the library multiple times and he's done a great job. Um, so it wouldn't be any different from what he's done in the past. He'd be helping with shelving, um, other little projects here and there for the staff. Um, I've spoken with the teen librarian and she said she would have projects for um, anyone, any volunteer, especially a student volunteer. Um, also children's and um, circulation can, can always use someone to help with shelving and shelf reading. Um, when summer reading comes up, we'll need someone to help with that program later on in the year. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's definitely lots of to do. Lots to do. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. yeah. Well, welcome, Declan. Why don't you tell us about what you've been doing at the library and your uh, All right. So uh, I'm Declan Rudy. I'm a junior at Littleton High School. And um, over, I, I don't know when I started. It must have been, I think, eighth grade or seventh grade. Um, but it was a long time ago, though. I started volunteering. Um, at the Ruben Hoare Library. It was back in the old building. And um, I, don't, I don't know exactly how many hours, but I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of like 200 hours. Um, I would go normally four hours a week. And uh, uh, like you were talking about, I was doing things like shelving and um, putting all that stuff away and things like that. And uh, I think I could do that again. And I think I'm pretty good at it. Uh, I've had a lot of practice. So uh, I think I could help out with that. Um, so four hours a week is pretty great commitment. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone have questions for Declan? Can you find where things go in the new library? <laughs> I can probably <laughs> figure it out. Yeah. It's actually, I've been in there a few times and, um, I think it's easier to find stuff in that new one with everything. There's a lot more space and it's, I, I really like the new library. I know this is not really relevant, but <laughs> it's very nice. You'll find stuff, I promise you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah when I told the staff Declan um, had applied, everyone was like, definitely, definitely him if we have to pick someone, so. That's yeah. a resounding yeah. round of support there, so that's good. No, the staff has really appreciated your, your commitment, but also your regular commitment. It's a lot easier to train a volunteer and keep them coming um, regularly, so that's awesome, thank you. Of course. Any other questions? Or do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, I, do, I actually do have a couple questions. Um, first off, I just wanted to ask if my previous hours count towards the, would count towards this thing at all. I mean, either way, I can definitely help out some more. Um, and then following that, you know, so if I have to do more hours, um, like what does the time frame look like for when I have to have those in? Because um, the scholarship, so this, this scholarship, it says on all the paperwork and stuff that you have to be a senior. Um, but my you know, teacher, Mrs. Harvey and the NHS advisor and stuff, she emailed me and she said, cause she knew I had been volunteering at the library and uh, she emailed me and said, no seniors had applied. So I should just <laughs> apply and see what happens. Um, so in terms of how soon I have to, would have to spend the scholarship money, um, I definitely can't do that cause I'm, I'm not graduating this year. So I just uh, would like to know hey, like um, when I'd have to have those hours in by. So normally it would be by the end of um, August when summer reading ends, but that's because we usually go with a senior and that's when they're going off to college. So it would really be up to the trustees. Um, but I would have over the summer to do it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's a major thing because yeah, I'm really busy right now, but over the summer I can work tons of hours. Okay. Yeah. I think from what Sam has described, the help over the summer, especially summer reading time is yeah particularly what they're interested in. Um, that okay, time yeah. So that sounds like your, your availability matches. Yes, my availability really is much better in the summer, yeah. Yeah. 
I definitely understand that um, things are busy in the spring for every high school kid. Yeah. So. What do trustees feel like? This is the first time I think to my knowledge that we've interviewed a junior for this scholarship. So what do we think about think so. the time frame? I don't, th I don't think it is. Is it? No. It, the first it is doing. actually. Is it really? Yeah. Um, um, and we usually, we usually have it opened up to seniors um, because um, they're about to go to college. Um, it looks good on a college application and um, as a way of helping, but no, um, I think, uh, well, I think everyone's just um, really working hard and stressed out now and there were no seniors that applied. So um, I am fine with, um, I'm actually, Mrs. Harvey's the one that suggested uh, juniors to up me and I said uh, have all them apply since we didn't have any. Um, I'm fine with um, having a junior do it. it. It's just a little, it's just a little different, right? Is all. Um, theoretically, we get you for a longer period of time than than we would have a senior because yeah. usually we, I think with the seniors we usually had them go through somewhere in late Jul July because basically, you know, they're working really hard to get out of town by August. So, <laughs> um, so um, I have no problem. With Declan, um, I, I know he's been a hard worker, and I know how much the staff has appreciated him. So, um, and you know, having him over the summer, or even, you know, if it needed to go into the fall, we could talk about that too. So, um, I'm just curious, Declan, do you have any aspirations in library science as a as a profession? I'm just kind of curious about your kind of future goals. Um, no, not particularly. If I'm being honest, I'm planning on right now. Planning on going into biology. Uh, I think that's, that's just curious. Yeah. Great. I approve of that. A major, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> As was my major, but. <laughs> um. So, uh, Kimberly or Wendy, do you want to add anything? I was just wondering what some of um, Declan's other interests are and what some of um, his other commitments are currently. Uh, so right now, in addition to um, school, obviously, which is a lot of work because I'm taking a bunch of honors classes and AP classes and stuff. Um, I'm also uh, at Brown Belt in Kung Fu, which I've been doing for the last eight and a half or nine years. So over half my life, actually, now that I think about it. Um, and I also have a job um, and I also am in uh, the... LHS drama spring production of Cinderella. That's actually where I am right now. Um, I'm sitting outside <laughs> of the auditorium. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've been, I'm playing um, Prince Charming actually in Cinderella. That's a great role. Big props. Congratulations. You, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Are you still doing the Good Shepherd Club too? Uh, that was actually my brother who was in that. My little brother. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. But yeah, between school and work and Kung Fu and theater, it's, I don't not I don't really have any availability at the moment, but um, <laughs> once we're done with this show, I'll be open, I'll have more time open, and then especially in the summer, I'll have a, a lot of free time. And then if hours need it, to finish up, we could talk about next fall too. Yeah. And give a shout out. When is the show? Uh, it is April eighth, ninth, and tenth. Uh, Friday, April eighth at seven p.m. Saturday, April ninth at one p.m. and seven p.m. and Sunday, April whatever the last one is at. Um, 1 p.m. You you are sitting in front of a panel of families who have kids doing drama, so you will get many of us there to watch you. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good show. Get everyone. I think, really I think every single one of us has a kid who's done the drama program through middle really? school or high school. Yeah, so we support you. <laughs> it's good to hear. Kim, do you have um, any? I, I do. I have one question. Yeah, just when um, when you're not volunteering, what is your kind of favorite part of the library? Not um, necessarily I, this new library, but just in general, like our library. Just in general, I um, I watch a lot of movies and I check out a lot of movies from the library and it's a lot cheaper than having to buy them or anything. And so everything that's not on Netflix or Disney, which is a lot of stuff, um, it's really nice to be able to get those for free within a couple of days of when I want to watch it. Okay. Awesome. All right. So I... I'm going to just speak about having a junior in this position as an opportunity as um, someone who's done college interviews before. I'd actually argue that this gives a junior a chance to put these hours on their college application. I think this would be a great thing. 
Um, and then as long as the hours are fulfilled, I know you've done plenty of hours for us, but it is a scholarship. So in my opinion, um, it, you kind of have to work for a scholarship, right? So yeah, yeah I'm definitely, I hope I'm definitely you understand willing. that point of view. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. I'm definitely willing to do yeah. um, the 150 or more if whatever it is. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I do trust given that your commitment to the library in the past has, um, has, shown that you've committed and done the hours too. So I think we can, we can work with you here, um, which is great. Anyone else have comments about the um, scholarship piece? How we want to run it. This feels to me like this is the first year, one that we've opened it up so late and that we kind of have to rethink how we're going to handle this, how we're going to do this timeframes. Declan, you probably don't need to hear all this. But, <laughs> um, well, I think it's good uh, to know. Yeah, so this is, we've kind of, we've started late and I just want to make sure that all the trustees are on board with the um, decision part of this. So, so does anyone have, I don't, I don't actually have a set way that I would want to do this. Does anyone have um, some ideas of how they think this should go? So I'll, um, I'll make a motion that we offer the scholarship to Declan. Um, um, going through August 31st, doing the hours through August 31st. Um, and, and Declan, I know you're outrageously busy until the play. Um, I would ask that you try and do, uh, you know, a few hours a month, not a few hours a week, but just get your feet wet when you have a chance now and not save them all up. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, cool. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, to do the four or the six or however many hours a week, just, you know, um, just make an appearance every once in a while um, to get an idea what's going on. And, um, and the other big thing from my perspective is just um, work with, I don't know if, is he going to be reporting to you or Jenna or. So um, in the past it was always Andy. Um, yeah. Which is now. Oh, Jenna. That won't work so well anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Declan, you can just, uh, I'm going to talk to the staff again and let them know. Um, and so why don't you just uh, stop by and see me or email me and we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. Okay. So, Sounds good to me. So, so the only request is, you know, come up with a schedule that works for you and, and the staff and try and stick to it. Right. Um, so that um, we don't want to be hunting you down. Not that you're not that you're the type of person that we have to hunt down. Oh, yeah, I can, had, I can play that. We've had yeah. that in the past. Right. That, you know, um, so just just so we have an idea what's going on and, you know, we'll probably have you back to another meeting or two at some point just to see how things are going, um, both from our perspective and 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 from yours. So we can know what we can do better to help you and things like that, too. So, so. yeah, that sounds that sounds perfectly reasonable to me. Yeah, your feedback would be helpful for us to structure the scholarship in the future, too. So that's um, that would be appreciated. Of course. And I would right. horribly second Mark's. Um, <laughs> what was Mark's motion? Procedure. <laughs> was that a, was that a motion? The Mark? whole thing. Yeah. So I can't talk for three, three minutes, Mark. <laughs> yes. I, I second that motion. Scholarship to Declan hours through August thirty first. Was yes. that the, okay? All right, and that has been seconded. So, any further discussion on this? No. All right, we can do our trustee vote. So Chris. Yes. Wendy. Yes. Mark. Yes. Kimberly. Yes. And I am also a yes. So congratulations, Declan. We look forward to seeing congratulations. you. Congratulations. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I look forward to um, doing more time at the library because I since the pandemic started, that's like when I stopped doing it. So I'm looking forward to getting back into that a bit. That's great. Well, thank you for all you've done in the past, and we're looking forward to working with you in the future. So and good luck on the play, and we'll see you there. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Hi. Am I, am I all set to? You're all set. Thank, thank you, you so much. So you back to rehearsal. <laughs> they need Prince Charming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Any further discussion on the scholarships? No, I think it's great. I feel like we were open to juniors. Maybe we didn't have junior supply at some point, but I feel like we talked about juniors at some point. But I mean, I do I'm like just... having the juniors. I like it. I do like it. I think it's great. It's totally fine. And if something, it gives us time if something really goes awry 
and they're scheduling that we hold, we can have more time for them. Um, or if it's not working, we just need, I think the cut point at the end of summer, so we can reevaluate makes sense. We don't want it to keep, keep going. If someone's really not reliable, then that's, I know Declan won't be that way, but. I think my only question now is because I think there was some communication um, via email about if Priyal um, does kind of follow through and ask for, like, it, is there, is there money for two different scholarships? I know that was a question that kind of went through the email. Um, is she still in the running or because she didn't come tonight, she's not in the running or, or, or what? What do you guys think? It, well, did Sam just say she never replied? Right. She never replied to my uh, email inviting her. So, so what sort of so communication has she had? She, does she apply? She actually applied or yeah, yeah, she, she, apply. she, she just sent me an email. Um, I've never met her. Uh, I asked the staff. They they said they've never never met her either. So I'm not sure. So um, I'm not opposed to offering to revisiting a scholarship for her if she shows up to um, later in this meeting or to our March meeting. So I don't. Um, she, obviously, her time has been more compressed, but. Um, if if she's interested um, and wants to follow up um, with us, I mean, it's possible that she didn't get the email or there's just she was busy or something. So um, can't log into Zoom. I don't know. There's lots yeah. of reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't I don't have a problem with, you know, um, keeping her on the list as a potential if she wants to um, come to our our next meeting. If um, if Sam thinks there's work for them to do, then um things for them yeah so and it's not too much of a burden on the staff then sam has two scholarship volunteers you have enough work and enough staff to like guide them yeah um i i spoke with the staff and they were okay with two um and then if, especially if declan's kind of going to push it off to later maybe priya could do it at the, towards the beginning. Mm -hmm. mm. Shade Junior also? I'm not sure. I believe so. It's hard to tell from the application. So if we are yeah. doing it, opening it to juniors in the future, I think I'd want to know who we're, <laughs> yeah. which level we're looking at. Definitely. On the application, future application. All right. Well, let us know if you hear from her, Sam. Sure. Okay. Any other conversation? We're good? Good. I don't see any thing. Okay, correspondence. Uh, no correspondence. No correspondence. Did we get our check? <laughs> That's not a correspondence. Um, approval of minutes from January 11th, 2022. And did our minutes, and they, they looked great. And I appreciate the help with the minutes, Anne. Anyone have any comments on the minutes? The revised minutes. Kim and I both ca caught a few things and they've oh, been yeah. fixed in the last version that was sent. Is that how it typically works? Um, there'll be email prior to the meeting if people catch stuff? That's a really good question. We usually have Chris do them, so it's a little easier um, to do it. But yeah, if you could email them ahead of the meeting, we can review them ahead of time, revise them um, okay. with those small typos and things we found. So, so send them, I had sent them to Sam a few weeks ago, but I should send them to everybody a few weeks before the meeting when I get them done. Yeah, when they're done. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, if you just want to send them to the trustees email, that would be great. And we'll that way you'll have more time to follow up on corrections. Awesome. If needed. Okay. Any other comments on the minutes? Hearing none. Anyone? Move to approve the minutes from January 11th as revised. Second. All right. So that was Chris seconding? Yep, it was Chris. <laughs> I never right. could do that. <laughs> I know. You do that now. <laughs> now that you're not taking the minutes. All right. So let's go, Kimberly. Aye. Mark. Yes. Wendy. Yes. Chris. Yes. And I am also a yes. That's great. Okay, friends report. Oh, wait, treasure. Is, yep. Did treasure I skip report. treasurers? I'm sorry, I can't read the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> treasurers report. Thank you, Kimberly. <laughs> um, 
I actually can't tell if I sent these to you, Anne, um, today. Yes, I think I did. You did. Um, I'm going to say them out loud for the sake of the meeting, but Anne, if you need them uh, specifically, they're in my email today. Um, the, the amount of the accounts. Um, the RHL gift account has $5,178.21. The building account is $961,000. $295.49. And the grant amount is $4,688,651.20. And I did reach out to Sean today to ask about the birth, um, but as of today, he does not have it. Okay, thank you. Any questions? I don't those? think it's going to be pretty though. Because of the stock market crash, that part, yes. that part of that thing, yeah. <laughs> We'll absorb that into marches. <laughs> okay. Any other comments or questions about the treasurer's report? Hearing none, we can move. Anyone? <laughs> Good. Does anyone want to make a motion to accept? A motion to accept. I'll second. Ah, uh, too slow, Chris. You got to be on the board. Right. <laughs> Poor Anne's not going to realize who's. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, <All right>. <laughs> Wendy, and then Mark. Okay, so we'll go Wendy. Uh, yes. Chris. Yes. Kimberly. Yes. Mark. Yes. And I am also a yes. Now to the friends report. Mira <laughs> is not here, so. <laughs> Wendy, I'm happy to take that. Agreed. <laughs> you, to review oh, you, her. You wanna, you're okay reading, Wendy? Yes, yeah, unless you would prefer to, Chris. Tell you. Okay. So Mira attended the Friends Report uh, or the Friends Meeting on uh, January 19th, and topics discussed included membership. The plan is to reach out to people who haven't renewed yet in the February during the Love Your Library Week. Um, they are working on trying to figure out the best way to organize the book sale room. The spring book sale is planned for April 30th, and they will have a book drop-off time beforehand. They're hoping to use um, the Sturt's meeting room and the lower lobby. They welcomed new youth advisor Wyatt Edwards. They talked about newsletter planning. They often get their biggest bump in membership when that goes out, and they're doing a once-a-year aim for September. Um, they're continuing to check on April for collecting cans and bottles at the transfer station. Um, this weekend, cookie sale, Saturday to 5, February 5th, and they are asking for volunteer bakers, and they will use pre-packaged boxes rather than pack your own box with respect to COVID. And then the Seed Library, Littleton Community Farm is no longer hosting this. And Judith Taylor asked if the library could take a more active role and requested a $250 budget from friends for supplies and funding for garden programs. She'll be doing all the work and the request was approved. Do we know what, I, know, I recognize none of us sat at the friends meeting. Mark, you may have more information, but what does it mean by a more active role in the SEED library? Does anyone have a feel for what that means? Yeah, so Judith re reached out to um, Helen and I. Uh, I. The Littleton Community Farm doesn't want to do the SEED library anymore. Um, they want to focus on other things. So she asked if we would kind of take on the role of um, advertising it more and um, holding programs for it. So um, we reached out to the friends and they agreed to pay for some of the supplies that she would usually need, like little seed envelopes and, um, you know, whenever we do a program or something like that. But she's going to do most of the work, with, uh, her along with the people that always did it in, in the past. Um, it's just that we're kind of, you know, taking on the... It's not Little Community Farm anymore. Basically, we're taking over as the sponsor, I guess you could say. And our role in that sponsorship is friends will provide the supplies and will provide the advertising for. Right. Right. And maybe she can guide us on that when that advertising should be happening, given the growing season. Right. Um, Helen and I are working with her to um, okay. do that. We're going to have uh, some sort of opening day event, um, but we're, we're still trying to figure out the logistics logistics of that 
given COVID especially. I think we'll be okay this spring. I'm optimistic. Hopefully. Okay. So the seed, the seed library still kind of a collaboration, but more falling onto our shoulders. Right. But we explained to her, we don't want this to be something where the staff is taking it over. And so she understands that. Okay, great. That was, that's actually my concern. If that, yep. Okay. Yeah. Any questions about the friends report? Um, I was wondering when exactly Love Your Library Week is and what other events might be planned for that week. So Love Your Library Week is um, actually it's Love Your Library Month. February has always been, uh, it's, it's sort of a thing that the American Library Association does with libraries all over the country. Um, it's just a way to, you know, get the word out about libraries and, you know, make it a thing. <laughs> it's usually around Valentine's Day. Um, so right now it's mostly um, the Friends event that we're doing. Um, that's the main program that's going on. Uh, love your, your uh, the cookie sale. Cookie sale, okay. I saw the uh, quilling craft actually fit into with the heart. Right, um, yeah. Wanted, that was, that looked wanted, really cool. I wanted to do that, but we're down to one car right now and Josh was going someplace else. That looks like a cute program. <laughs> it did. <laughs> okay, any other Friends Report? comments doesn't sound like it okay are, um sam are the friends doing the the candy jar this year for valentine or on valentine's that they normally do yes i did pass by it today on my way to my office yes it's uh okay. it's it's there they're doing that okay okay so we should advertise that so people know if we have not already maybe it's maybe it's out there and i've missed it <laughs> Um, I think we're still waiting on the toothbrush that usually goes along with it. <laughs> we usually have both. <laughs> Do you need the toothbrush to get the guesses? No. I, I love that it comes with a toothbrush. It does. It's one of my favorite parts. <laughs> As a parent, I approve. <laughs> All right, trustee updates. Why don't we start with Kimberly? Skipping building updates. Oh, building updates. See, I really can't do the agenda. Sorry, Anne. I can't deal with the agenda today. I did skip building updates. Go ahead. Do you want to uh, do you want to drive, Sam? Um, sure. Um, so um, right now there are some issues that are being addressed by Commodore and the OPM. Um, we um, they're supposed to come tomorrow. I don't know what the weather is going to say about that, but um, they're supposed to come tomorrow and take care of some of the issues. Um, but for the most part, um, a lot of the major issues have been addressed. Um, the wiring of the TV over the stairs was fixed. Um, some of the, um, the, the locks were fixed. Um, a lot of the, the gate was finally fixed. That was, that was a, a good thing. Um, and Did then they move the shut off switch for that too. Not yet. Whatever. Still, okay. Yeah. Is there a plan? I, I asked Commodore to, do, to to send out the manufacturer. Yes, um, I'm not sure when that'll be up. Um, Tucker Furniture did come, and uh, Tucker Library Interiors. I'm sorry, the furniture vendor. They did come and put up some of the missing end cap, uh, panels. Um, they have to come back and put up um, the the shelving that still hasn't been. Uh, we're still waiting on to be delivered, and some of the the tops for um, the children's room for the, the shelving there. Um, yeah, and then there's the solar panels. Do you wanna talk about that, Mark? Sure, um, so uh, uh, Jamie Eldridge and Jim Asiero were out last Friday for uh, handing us the big check for the solar panels. Um, I believe they will, I believe the project is going back out to bid either today or whatever the cycle is, it'll be in the next cycle for the bid. I can't follow if it goes out on Thursdays or Wednesday. So it either went out today or next Wednesday or both, depending on where it's hitting um, with bids due back um, like the 23rd of February, I think. Um, so we think we've worked out the issues with the financing and how to pay for them um, in the right time frame um, with the state. So uh, we should be all set for that. Um, um, and we are still waiting on the car charger from 
LELD. They're waiting on the charger for their office to move the one that's at their office down to our office. So um, they're hoping that moves sometime in the spring, but we don't have a date. Um, there is one more thing um, for the for the ad for the bids. Um, it's going to cost four hundred and fifteen dollars to to put the ad in the Lowell Sun, um, and I think they wanted they expected the trustees to pay for that um, because it can't come out of the grant, as far as I know. So they they asked if we could put that in the minutes that we would pay for it out of MMDT. Four hundred and fifteen dollars for the yeah. newspaper ad. Yeah. Do we need to take a motion for this? Yeah. Okay. Someone want to. What's the ad for? For the uh, the bid to put out the bid for oh, um, okay. the solar panels. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not. So I think. Okay. Well, I'm not sure exactly why we have to do that rather than it's coming out of the project budget, but we should vote it anyway just in case it has to right. be done that way. Move, so. to, appro move to approve um, to bid fund a specific amount or an amount. Move to, move to pay for an ad in the Lowell Sun to, um, for a bid for the solar panel installers. A okay. second. Is that specific enough for what we need? Um, we should probably say, four, I think it's $415. So I think we have to Okay, so move to approve $415 to place an ad in the Lowell Sun for to put um, an ad for bidding. I had it better the last time <laughs> for the social <laughs> solar, <laughs> solar panel installers. Just a second. And you can phrase that in a way that makes it sound better. <laughs> Turn it to English. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So Kimberly. Yes. Mark. Yes. Wendy. Yes. And Chris. Yes. And I am also a yes. Okay. Mark, you're going to work through that. Who's, who's bucket it's comes out of though. Yes, I will keep on that. Okay. Thank you. Who actually seconded that? It sounded like a couple of people did. I think you had Chris two. Chris beat you Wendy. I think I beat Wendy. I think Wendy, Chris okay. Wendy. I, think I don't know. Wendy's came through first. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Chris is fine on that, and thank you. All right, <laughs> let's see how far I can jump ahead on the agenda now. Um, trustee updates. <laughs> we'll start with Kimberly. Okay. Um, as usual, I've been in and out pretty much every day. There's always books to drop off and books to pick up, and I just love being there and saying hi to everybody. Um, I've uh, used and actually Ambi has also um, the small meeting rooms a few times and I really love um, how easy it is to book those in advance um, online and also Ambi was able to just the other day he needed to do some homework while he was waiting for me and he was able to just go up to the counter and do it also and um, I just love how easy that is such a great process um, I never use the small meeting rooms at the old library so this is new for me and it's it's great um, I like that, that Catherine came in ready to go. She already got a team craft up and going. Um, and I also really appreciate the kind of two new things I noticed. One is the library of things catalog, which is amazing. Um, yeah. And then also the recommended by shelves. Mm -hmm. um, that I think that's new since last month. And I really like that the librarians have been filling it with not like book, like books and also other media. And it didn't occur to me that there would be other media there because I'm a book person, but I really like that um, it potentially appeals to a lot of different people. Thanks. So Chris, do you want to go? Sure. Um, I was very happy to be at the little mini ceremony last Friday when the um, legislators came and presented the check to us because I, I was a, um, I had missed the opening ceremonies back in the fall so I was excited to be sort of be there and I don't know it, it felt like a celebration to me even though it was a little sort of smaller um, so that was exciting and I also want to say I really love my fleece jacket so thank you Wendy for making those happen um, I've been wearing mine every day as my winter coat <laughs> so I'm really excited about that um, I'm hoping at some point to spend my Friday, my work from home Fridays uh, at the library, but tomorrow with being a snow day again, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm going to actually get over there in the weather, but my goal is to be over at the library for my work from home days on Fridays at some point. So 
very excited. That's all. I'm glad you can make the check ceremony too. Wendy, how about you? I have not been to the library pretty much at all because my whole family has taken terms getting COVID over the last month. Um, and we have been very, very grateful to be able to download books via the library. So um, we are taking full advantage of that part of our membership, um, our library cards. Um, and that's really it <laughs> on our end for currently. We're looking forward to getting back uh, in the next week or so. Yeah, I hope you recover soon. Okay, Mark. Um, so I was in the library the other day and I noticed that Kimberly's puzzle table expanded to more than one table. That and more than one two puzzle. Or th <laughs> two or three puzzles going that. at the same time. <laughs> There's like um, different was, levels of puzzle too, which I loved. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I thought actually it was put great. Away, I actually put away one of the puzzles because it had been out there for like four weeks and nobody had gotten any further on it. So I was like, this puzzle's going away. <laughs> put it on the swap one. Um, I worked with um, Sam and Brian and Ed to get, there's a, uh, I don't know if you've been over to the library, but there's a new container that they're starting to dismantle the stuff in the old library and move out so that uh, departments can start to move into the new building. So that's exciting for them. And Katrina and I spent <laughs> one wonderful Saturday in the storage area trying to clean it up and make sense of it. For anyone that has never moved one of those old shelves from the old library, I highly recommend never signing up to do it because it, it is outrageously heavy. Um, I was sore for a couple of days afterwards, but I think we made good progress and it looks much, I, personally, I think it looks much nicer or will once we get uh, another afternoon, evening in there. So <laughs> more times in the closet with Mark. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and Sarah and John. So we had, yes. so we had family helpers there too, which yes. I was incredibly grateful for. And Eric was hanging out in the hall. He was hanging out in the children's room until he got kicked out when the library closed. <laughs> um, yeah. So the staff didn't even come and look that we were in the closet. So we could have hidden in there all night. No, we couldn't have. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you were sick of me. <laughs> needed food by the end of it. That's true. Okay. So, I'll do my updates now. So I was also helping in the closet. Um, and it definitely is like a phased task. I think we, um, we moved a lot of the building supplies and put them put like with like built the shelves, um, move some things around, but there's definitely more work to be done and some supplies that we're not even sure we need to keep or if they make sense to keep. So we've got some more work to do there. And then also um, we'll have to expand to the children's room, storage room, and then the one that's off the nonfiction and the upstairs just to see what needs to be where. Um, so that's an ongoing task. We'll let you guys know if we need hands. Um, but it's a phased process. And hopefully we didn't make it too much worse for the staff in the meantime, because the goal is to make it better for them in the end, to make it work for you guys. So would love to hear feedback from the staff, Sam, if anyone has an idea of how it should work. That would be great. You included, of course. Um, Let's see. I was also at the ceremony for the solar panel um, check, which was, it was great to be able to have that moment um, to talk to our legislators. Um, I have to say every time I go into the teen room now, it's like taking life with Catherine being there to actually set it up and to, it looks like a little bookstore starting to form um, with the new books and stuff. It's really fun. And I've, I've noticed more kids in there since she's been there. So I don't know um, if it, maybe it's just the time of the year. My, my daughter just yelled. Yes. So it's good. <laughs> she approves. Um, and let's see, We've, we attended the select board and FinCom budget meeting. Sam did the presentation there. It was a good job, Sam. Um, so hopefully our budget is approved by soon. I don't know when that comes through. And then uh, we've been working on the annual report that is due tomorrow. So the other thing is the, um, I agree that reserving the rooms, meeting rooms has been awesome to do online. Um, I'm still a little confused <laughs> about the after hours entry exits and stuff. Um, but I think people who are there just need to know they need to let their, um, their attendees in because the door locks behind you. But my Girl Scouts have loved 
meeting in the new, both the rooms downstairs at this point, the Murray room and the starts room. And the first time when the lights went out on them, they thought that was really cool. They could just walk out and turn them back on. So that was entertainment all on its own. Um, so that's been great. So it's been awesome to have that meeting space to spread out, especially right now with COVID stuff happening. So that's all I have. There's probably more. That's enough. Let's see. I will not skip the director's report, Sam. That's okay. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so as was mentioned, Catherine um, started as our new YA librarian and she's doing a great job. She um, pretty much got a running start. Um, she uh, has already made a lot of changes down there and she has a lot of plans for moving forward in the future. Um, so she's doing a great job and we're happy to have her back after her not being there for a few years. Um, uh, as you also mentioned, I attended a budget meeting with the select board and FinCom to discuss the FY23 budget. So hopefully that will go through. Um, and we've slowly begun advertising the library of things and hopefully we'll um, get the policy set tonight. And at the moment we have things like Wi-Fi hotspots, some um, iPads, cameras. Um, today, someone donated a sewing machine. So if you, someone beat you to it, sorry. Um, but we might- You might need um, to. Maybe we need to. Um, and then uh, upcoming programs include um, Catherine's uh, teen take and make Valentine's craft, craft kit. Um, we had the heart quilling workshop last night. Um, we've been having an ongoing little, little and letters alphabet story time, virtual toddler story time, third Wednesday's book club. Uh, we have an upcoming author talk with Ted Reinstein on February 15th to talk about his new book. Um, I hope to have movie night and show Belfast. And the end of winter, uh, winter reading program will be on February 26. Um, yep. Yeah, so the rest is just stats. Uh, statistically, we're looking pretty good. We've seen a big uptick in the number of people coming in every week. Um, circulation numbers have also increased by a lot. Um, oh, to answer your question last time about another notary, Catherine was actually a notary and she still is. So she um, just bought her supplies and she's, offering her notary services. So we have another notary and uh, we did uh, some other staff did um, mention they might be interested. So I'm, I'm still talking to them about that. Um, yeah. So that's it. Financially, we're also doing well. We're moving steadily along. Um, no issues there that I can see. So yeah. Any questions? A lot of meeting room use. It's great. Yeah. Anyone have questions? Specific question, but it's, it's, it just jogged my memory, this one. The um, Wi-Fi hotspots, there was something that through the state of Massachusetts, they were covering it for a year or through um, LBC, something like that. Is that, has that. is that continuing for another year? Um, yeah, so it continues yearly until they decide to stop it um okay. but um we we have uh five hotspots from the mass board of library commissioners that are available to patrons and patrons have already been taking them out yep okay we used it once it was really helpful when we were up in like northern vermont there was no service so. oh great so i was just wondering whether or not that program was continuing i'm glad to hear it is the Library of Things is definitely getting traction today in our one of those local Facebook groups. Someone was like, Drake, it has a Library of Things. Wouldn't this be great? And Diane was like, here's ours. <laughs> and so everyone got excited about it. And um, probably why you got a sewing machine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I spoke with um, Liz over at the Senior Center. And she, she had some suggestions for stuff we should get. Um, we also talked about, I guess they have metal, medical equipment that they loaned out. So we talked about how maybe we can um, work together to sort of get the word out about that as well. That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, I do love that kind of collaboration. So let's let's see what we can do to get what items that their, um, their patrons could use um, specifically, and then also see how you guys can collaborate on that. That'd be great. Or at least raise awareness about it being in town and how to access it. Um, so we'll definitely get to the policy part of that tonight. Is there anything else on the director's report? Um, I had one thing. Um, it, just going, 
I don't know that we necessarily need to do this going forward long term or just um, what, but it would be nice to figure out or to try and keep track of the meeting room use by hour by day, right? Because it's going to come up, you know, like um, with different organizations. So if we could, I don't know the best way to, it doesn't have to be like on a weekly basis, but if you can kind of like, you know, figure out a good way of saying that, you know, um, the, the busiest time for the search room is, you know, Tuesday afternoons or, you know, when, you know, so we can just kind of figure out um, the ebb and flow of when the meeting rooms are going to be used and how busy they are. Um, yeah, there's a record can, generator in Asabet and it, it might do that already. So I'll, I'll look into it. That'd be great. We don't need, I, I, yeah, I don't need it. I don't think it's important to have like a week by week, but if you could like figure out for the month, you know, or just figure it out like that way, kind of an overlay to say, right. That information will be so. very useful, especially for the starts room in particular, I think Murray room too, but um, just okay. in terms of us going forward and figuring that out. Um, and, the, and the other thing that would be good is to know like the room use by library and outside library versus town versus outside organizations right or you know you know the kids use versus community um the community the community use versus um the town use type things right you know by kind of like which organizations are doing it okay so i heard the gubernatorial forum or something is happening soon in the starts room one of these saturdays no this, this saturday this it's supposed saturday to be this, yeah it's supposed to be this saturday um so lctv is going to have their first recorded thing in the search room so soon we'll get to see how that works yeah so, you know they were working on that equipment yeah okay uh, we're going to go into old business and those library policies. So Kimberly, I am going to turn this over to you. Okay. Um, I'd actually like to, if we, it's okay to do it in a different order, if we can move library of things last of the four, because um, I think that one actually needs the most conversation and work. Okay. Um, okay. So um, I think that the, the PDFs that Sam you sent were clo close to finished, but Katrina had done some work on them. So if, if people don't mind, I'll share my um, share my screen and we can look at them that way. Is that okay? Sounds good. Okay. Um, so can, what was the first one? Sorry, I keep on switching screens. So the, the library. Yep. Yeah. Children <laughs> in the library. Okay. Oh, okay. It's disabled. Maybe if I just, can I, should I share the, the if I share the thingamajiggy in the chat, we can all go to it. Yeah. Okay. I just put the link in the chat. Thank you. <sighs> Katrina, thank you for um, changing up the pronouns and then making it generic. I really, but I really appreciate the pronouns. I wish I thought of that. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> I do think if we, as we're doing these policies, where there are pronouns, I would love for them to be inclusive. So if okay. we can just keep an eye on that as we go. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think the only outstanding question on this, um, Katrina, you had mentioned whether or not we should be specific about kind of acceptable behaviors or non-acceptable behaviors. Um, oh, thanks, Sam. Now it's off. Now it's on everybody's screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess maybe we should talk about that. And also, if anybody has any other questions or suggestions as far as these pol this policy is concerned. Okay, what do we think about adding specifics about behavior? Well, first up is, are people comfortable with the wording currently? And then we'll do this behavior thing as a separate okay. conversation. Yep. So the current wording, would anyone um, amend anything? I can't I'm just tell checking, them. if I have two kids, one who's 11 and one who's 12, they're good. Yes, because okay. the 12-year-old knows they are supervising the 11-year-old. Okay. Are they told that when they come in? How do we? 
I'm just saying your two kids come over from the middle school and the 12 year olds responsible. Do they know that as they come in or. Well, that's part of my like behavior question. I think. Yeah. (laughs) That all kind of falls into the, these, these age kids are learning how to be in public. Some of them for the first time um, given COVID and things. So Sam, how does it normally, how is it normally enforced? Normally, it, it doesn't come up very much. Okay. Um, it, yeah, so it's it, it's kind of an honor system thing. I mean, we don't obviously we don't know just by looking at a kid whether they're eleven, twelve, or thirteen years old. You know, so um, it's really up to the parents to you know send their kids <laughs> and uh, have them re- be responsible for each other. Uh, basically, I I mean. Not to put it too bluntly, the the library staff doesn't want to be the police of the kids, and you know, nor should we be. And um, you know, so I think this policy is really just to sort of give a guideline, but I'm not sure that um, we necessarily go after kids, you know, and say, "Oh, well, you're 12 years old, so you're in charge." Yeah, you know? it gives you something yes. to point to if there are. Right. Issues. Yeah. Right. Basically. Is the 2.2 accurate? Yeah, yeah, I just noticed that. That doesn't seem right. That should no, be 11. No, that does not. Is it 11? Over oh. the age of, or 12 or older. Can we be specific? Yeah, 12 or older. Um, I think I was, I, I never really thought about the combo before, but I never, I guess I was, I know 12 year olds can babysit, but my 12 year old's not, he stays by himself, but I can't imagine him being in charge of like a three year old for three hours. So I know that's kind of up to the parents, but I guess I was surprised that a 12 year old can supervise, can be the supervising person um, for younger kids in the library, as opposed to being able to be on their own at the library, but they are also allowed to kind of be this, be alone with and responsible for a younger kid. I think that, again, if that's a sibling, that's different than, yeah. or if you're babysitting and you want a place to take them, there's library yeah. a pretty safe place to do that. It's just True. Yeah. Um, like not all 12 year olds babysit, but my 13 year old does. So like this right. would give them a chance to bring it. Yeah. Their babysitting charge there as an option. Makes sense. Um. I, I, like I said, Sam, it's not, it hasn't really been a problem. Right. And I don't want to put a behavior. I, I personally don't want to put a behavior definition in here um, because I don't want the libraries to feel like it's excluding kids who may need it. And, um, and I also don't want the librarians to feel like they have to in like, I don't know, enforce something that they're not, it's not really their role either. So um, but I do know that they're stressed sometimes with the kids being kids, and I'm trying to walk that line to give them something to point to if needed. So, Sam, do you have any feeling for that behavior piece? So, I think the behavior piece has mostly been the use of the quiet study rooms. So, um, you know, like the other day, I they've been, um, you know, writing on tables, and it's not anything a magic eraser can't get rid of, but still it's not something that should be happening uh either so on um, brand new yeah. tables so so that is a problem um yeah. so and maybe perhaps our meeting room policy needs to be enforced and then put out there very clearly about being right. able to use the room in the future if said thing happens on your time right. that doesn't seem like a behavior issue as much as a respect the property and Mm -hmm. rules of the library issue. Like, I think when you start getting into behavior, you run a slippery slope of kids with disabilities or kids who can't control their bodies, but whether, you know, you have a disability or not, you're not supposed to destroy property and you have to follow the basic rules. So I feel like, you know, you could make that distinction that your property is to be respected and, treated appropriately or do something along those lines should that be in the meeting room policy versus or, this policy or in the children policy I, I don't mind it being in the children and the library policy it does give us that spot for that 
middle school crowd coming over independently. And it could just be general. It could just be along the lines of the, you know, the rules of the library around, you know, respectful use of property and space are expected to be followed at all times. I, I don't think it has to be delineated much more than that necessarily. And it should be for all those age groups too. So that's fine. Yeah, because we would expect with that. Yeah, we'd expect it from a senior as much as we would from anyone else, uh, from a child. So, I mean, it's kind of also in the computer use policy. They say you're, you know, you're not going to do inappropriate things on the computers, and you know, it's kind of assumed that you're not going to rip pages out of books and deface them. So, I, it does seem like a general thing, um, but it also doesn't seem like something you necessarily have to call out in a policy because it seems like it should be just generally understood that you should be yeah. respecting. Yeah. I think, but there'll be like a library TikTok soon and we'll be in trouble. <laughs> I think I'm kidding. Yeah. No, in my old library, I used to have someone who uh, filmed YouTube videos from uh, <laughs> the library, from one of the meeting rooms and we, we just found it one day. <laughs> okay. I like the idea of what, what Wendy had said about just in general, respectful of property and, objects and people do we want to is there but what's the is there a sanction like what's the or risk losing the privileges of using the library like is there some kind of like what could happen if you're if you disrespect the library i have sorry i just i want to jump in for a second because we do have a policy that we haven't reviewed yet um that is the library usage policy and it feels like that's probably where this fits and it does have um okay it does have property damage, destroyed, um, things like that. Okay, so, so let's I feel like save we this. Probably me. circle back around to that when we get to that one. All right, so I don't think we need to add right, anything. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Chris. Do you want to? I just want to let to say that that there is a place for that if we're totally fine. Yep. Cool. Have you sent that one to me yet, Kimberly, or am I going to get it tomorrow morning? You, you have. It's in your. You have. <laughs> <laughs> you have it right way, now, when Mark. I things, when I send things to you, don't. <laughs> like you have to deal with it right away. It's just my brain needs to take care of it right away. <laughs> yeah. Not expect other people to follow up right away. <laughs> For those that um, don't know, as soon as we <laughs> adjourn tonight, Kimberly will send Mark 10 policies she's already edited. <laughs> okay, so I, I think we can take out my concern about behaviors and things if there is a general use. Yep. Okay. Any other comments, edits, or suggestions for the children's children in the library policy? Hearing none. Do we want to do these one at a time? Or just wait to the end? I'm okay with waiting to the end. Okay, let's move to the next policy then. Okay. No one else can decide. You answered first. <laughs> The historical room oh, policy. Okay. Let me get that. Sending the link. I don't think we have any outstanding questions about this one. Um, Sam, Katrina, Mark, and I all um, took a look at it. Um, so, if, and I also don't think there's been many changes since the PDF. <coughs> Excuse me. I've already looked at it. Anyone else have comments or concerns? We're not allowing knives to carve into the desk anymore. That's very sad. Mm -hmm. I love that desk. That's awesome. You know, you know, a desk you get to deface is the one that's already defaced. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> Speaking of which, Sam, I saw those names. It was in the meeting room I was in. I was like, oh, those sixth graders. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> we get a, we'll come back to this. Maybe Wendy and I can put our, and Kimberly can put our heads together of how to help our, our teens learn how to be in public yeah. and can work with the schools, maybe. Um, any questions about this one? I have no questions. I'm hearing none. All right. 
All right. So next one mm-hmm. is gift agreement building fund policy. This one, Mark Work. I'm not sure I actually read this one. Is that, wait, not that one. Which one? Hold on. Yeah, that one. Okay. Building fund meeting rights. Um, okay, Mark, I think, Mark, this one is largely yours. Your, Do you have your, the your link? Oh, sorry. Yeah, my bad. Forgot what we were doing. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I read this one. I think this was one, Mark, you updated it so it wasn't uh, so specific to the building. Yeah. We just made it a gift agreement, not a building fund agreement. Mark, does it go into the building fund? It doesn't have to. Okay. I think separate issue is what I want to learn what we're doing with that once we use the money. I had no comments here. So if you think back to the Barth report, um, there's all those funds in the Barth report, right? Um, And this would basically be covering if someone wanted to create another one of those funds. So this would be a separate fund. Yeah, they well, they could either potentially put put it into an existing fund or create a new fund and then figure out, you know, which of the buckets it goes in or if there's a new bucket. Um, So, yeah. So, for example, Rotary donated money to us, right, that isn't in the building fund, but they have a a Rotary fund. um, And this controls how we can spend the money out of that, right? Yep. So... Any comments? Wendy or Chris, you guys okay? Okay. So <clears throat> I think we've hit the library of things. Okay, here we go. So we have some outstanding comments and questions on this one. Um, is part of the thing. I'm going to just bring up from. Because Mark, you had your your your. I'm gonna copy your questions as well into the chat so we can all discuss those. We can cover those too. Did you? Sh- is this most recent one the, the link to the library? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So I think a lot of these are kind of questions for Sam. Yeah, Sam, tell us how Start library there. things work. <laughs> so also, Sam, first of all, thank you for bringing, like, pulling us all together this week. So yeah. thank you for, for the policy itself. Sure. Yeah. So in the draft I sent out, I actually did make the edit. Sorry, it's something about Google Docs. Oh. For some reason, it doesn't always work for me. So I can see your um, edits, but I can't always make edits myself. So that's why it's also my computer died or didn't die. It decided to go crazy on me the last couple of days. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so the Library of Things is, as I mentioned before, it's things like Wi-Fi hotspots, um, sewing machines, things of that nature that can go out that aren't the regular books or DVDs or anything like that. So um, a lot of libraries are doing this now. And so I, I borrowed from some of their policies. Um, so right now the guidelines would be that only items um, items can only be returned to the library and picked up from the library at the circulation desk because we don't want things going into the book drops because some of the things just won't fit into the book drop or they're too fragile to fit in there. Um, objects went out um, can can be returned cannot be returned to any other MVLC library, so it wouldn't go through into library loan. Um, it wouldn't. It is reservable, but only through our website. Um, so anyone with the MVLC library card could check it out, but they would have to come to the library to get it and they would have to return it to the Ruben Hoare Library. Um, whether or not we want to make borrowers 18 years or older, that's up to the, um, the, the trustees. Um, some of the things may be dangerous for anyone that's, um, you know, do we want a five-year-old checking out something that, you know, could be dangerous? So. Um, we might make it uh, 18 years or older or with parents' permission, um, but then that gets a little 
how do how do we get the parents permission you know do we have to have them sign some sort of paperwork first that sort of thing um i put the things to be borrowed for up to 14 days because um some of them um since there's no renewals it, it would be helpful to have them out for much longer um and then uh as far as the borrower, they would be responsible for um, the return of all the parts. But to answer your question, um, Katrina, we would provide things like uh, like a label maker. We would probably provide the extra labels, you know, and that can come out of our um, our budget. It's you know things like that. So something to consider when um, putting a lot of, something I have been considering. Like I wanted to get a photo printer. I thought about doing that, but then. The ink would be way too expensive. The paper would be too expensive. Okay. So I decided against that. So um, the, the things that you choose to keep in their collection, you have a mind toward replacement cost and whether that's budget friendly. Right. Right. Um, and then something a lot of other library thing policies have is that the the borrower is re responsible for the reasonable repair or replacement. And that's true of any other item. Um, if a, a patron damages a book, they, we usually charge them for it. Um, if they lose a book or a DVD, we, we would charge them for it or they could replace it. Um, and so that's something that we usually can put in the catalog, but I can also put in the aspect description of how much it would cost to replace the, the item. And for items that are, um, you know, donated, we, we usually look at what the reasonable market cost or market price for the item is at, at the current time, you know, considering it's also used. Um, so again, with some of the items, they could be dangerous uh, given what they are. So I put in there that the library is not responsible for any injury, loss or damage that may occur from the use of the thing. Um, and that's something else we would have to consider when accepting donations or deciding what to put in there. Um, you know, like, do I want to put an ax <laughs> in the, the library of things, you know, something like that. No machetes. Uh, yeah. No machetes. Um, Why not? Well, that's up to you guys. <laughs> Uh, so donations, um, it, it, we put that it's at the discretion of the library director, uh, and in consultation with the trust or in consultation with the library trustees, I think in my version, I removed the or, um, and the one that I sent out. So yeah, we uh, should remove the or in that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, as far as the collection development policy, what was your question about that again, Mark? Oh, I think that was. It's just me that was um, that when we have this online, we'll want to link that. It's just a note to myself. Yeah. Um, and again, like any other donation to the library, um, we can decide, the, the library staff can decide to remove it. Um, it doesn't stay there forever. Um, it, it depends on what our needs are at the time. And uh, we would only accept things in good working order. Again, like books, we don't accept books that are moldy or damaged. Um, that are donated to the library. So we wouldn't accept a, a broken sewing machine or a, a, a dirty sewing machine or something along those lines. Um, let's see. And then what were the other questions? I can't. Um, so I think uh, 14 days is fine. Is there any cap on the number of things people can um, borrow at any time? Yeah, so um, I was thinking one item at a time. Unless it's, well, actually, some things might go together. Like games, like some of my yeah, like games. games or something. Yeah. Um, we have snowshoes, and maybe once someone wants to take out binoculars at the same time. So, or both shoes. Or, <laughs> 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 so, actually, I was thinking of capping it at maybe like three three things at a time. I think that's, okay. that gives us good coverage. Um, um, that sounds like a, that's bad, that's poor English. There's a cap of borrowing. Borrowing is capped at. Uh, 
Um, okay. Katrina, is there any period of time between loans? That means can you not, you can't get it and then get it and like basically keep the iPad? Is that well, if it's, yes. So, yeah, if it's so, not renewed then. If it's right. not renewed, right, yeah. Yeah, it can't be renewed. And um, in ASVET, I have it set so that you're limited to one of the same item per month. Should we put well. that in here or, or just let it be? I just let it be, let it be because it's something that we can, Sam, the staff could enforce or override at their discretion, right? Okay. And there may be some items where, okay, if someone borrows it more, you know. Right, exactly. Yeah, especially if they're the only person, right? Yeah, like, if it's the only person taking something out and they keep, you know, just taking yeah. it two weeks a month out, then that's one thing, but um does it need no. to be in here though, though, so that the library staff could be more flexible with it? Because if it's not in here, then the understanding is I could keep taking it out. Yeah, if it may not be in your renewed, but they could come back the next day to get it is a different thing. But, but I mean, maybe saying there's, I don't know. Oh, sorry, is that what it, yeah, yeah. okay. So, it's you can't be renewed, so it should be good. They're by apologies. Yes, yeah. that's okay. Um, um, I think we've answered all of Mark's. Mark, did we get all yours? Wait, let me go back to Mark's questions. Um, so borrowing is not limited to Littleton. Things are not available through interlibrary loan. Uh, mm -hmm. A limit to the number of things. Can things be reserved or held, requested for a certain time, policy if they're not returned on time? Yeah, could you, like the meeting rooms, borrow for a certain date? Yes. So that's how it's set up that you go in and you choose your dates. It's, it works like a museum pass. Like, the, yeah. It's, you just choose the date you, you want it for. And yeah. That starts your so, 14 days. Mm -hmm. So if you don't, um, what happens if you don't return it at 14 days? What are, what's our policy then? Are we sending Katrina after you or? Yes. Actually, Kimberly would probably scarier, but. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like confrontation. I would be terrible at that. <laughs> so what I can really so what I maybe we need to go together. Yeah. <laughs> so right now in Asabet, it gives the person a one day buffer um, to re to return an item, um, and then after that we would start calling. And if if they don't return it, then we would charge them for it. Okay. Um. Okay. We make that clear that it's not like a. Because like book. the books, you, yeah, you get a long I mean, grace period. Long time, yeah. But the, maybe we should specify that the grace period is, is not as long for these. Right. Things may not be renewed. Um, something about you'll be, I don't want to use the word you contact i mean we have will be billed for repair or replacement yeah that's true so i i i mean i don't think we have to necessarily solve this one i think what we have is a, a good draft and i think we'll probably be revisiting this in a few months after we have more experience with it um but i my question is like um let's say that um we put a chainsaw in this policy it's actually a good thing to have in a library of things because it's something that you know you don't need that often and it would be nice to borrow one when you need it but then there's a lot of you know maintenance and gas and other things that go along with the chainsaw and storage what of something with we, gas <laughs> yeah and well potentially right what are we expecting from both the library and the borrower for something like that Right. I mean, obviously the chainsaw, you're going to use it and it's going to come back duller than it was, but it also potentially had gas or chainsaw oil on it. Are we expecting, what would we be expecting, um, you know, to return it in what sh condition for something like that or a weed whacker or something like that, whether they're a electric or gas powered, it's the same type of thing, right? It seems like a rental car to be like you have to return it 
you know, the full tag or the way you're returning it, like you, the way it came out, right? Or no, or people think of that differently. That, I was thinking that too. I just don't know if we want to put that somewhere or how we, how you put it. You the know. same thing. Things must be returned in the same condition in which they were borrowed. And I'd say comparable it's like blockbuster. Yeah. Comparable, yeah, it's like blockbuster. You had to rewind your tapes and stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. You took about rewound. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but like if you used a label maker, right, you're not expecting them to return them with the exact amount of tape that they had in the label maker, right? right? But it's... And, so you basically know, to say used, like wipe down your chainsaw after you've used it before you return yeah. it? I'm, I'm really questioning the chainsaw, Mark. I'm sorry. Are you also sending chaps and like protective, like the helmet? Like I'm really concerned about this. Viability. <laughs> but, the here. but the label we, maker we said we're not responsible. But the label maker is an interesting thing because like the label maker, if I borrowed that, I wouldn't necessarily expect to have the tape too because I could go to town and use all the tape. But like to have the machine itself, I, I would assume that I would have to incur the cost potentially of the tape. Sort of like how we do with the, um, the batteries for the things that you rent from the children's room, those listening things. Yeah. Yeah. The batteries. Yeah. Like I would do the batteries for that or if a cricket machine or sewing machine, I'm not expecting it to come with thread. But you do expect it to come with the right needle, right? I do expect it to come with a needle and I expect it to come with a power source. Yeah. But I'm expecting to, you know, I'm not expecting it to come with fabric for me or, you know, thread. I'm like, I'm, I'm expected to have to, to use the machine, but I'm expected to provide the stuff to have it work. I feel like there's certain, uh-huh. yeah. I feel like there's certain things that would be in that collection that might have different standards yes right because your chainsaw would have a different standard than your screwdriver or like whatever you're borrowing right so can we be vague but then if there's something specific that might be more dangerous there would be a little bit more of a specific policy that would go along with the chainsaw well we're definitely not letting under 18 borrow the chainsaw i'm scared of chainsaws yeah, I, 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 I just chainsaw terrifies me. I think that's a terrible yeah, a lot idea. Of people <laughs> borrow chainsaws. Because I think you're right. Like you you would have to drain the gas before you return it. You're not gonna re- return that full because that's right. So there's certain things that might pretty be, sure the building inspector would not be happy with us right, no. a chainsaw full of gas. We're keeping that one well, in the shed. <laughs> that's well, not being stored in the library. Right. Well, Chris raises think- a good point. Like, is it worth like having a disclaimer that some items have additional requirements and they're expected to be followed? Well, I wonder if I'm looking at Katrina's next comment, um, which is, is there a list in the back? Is there a list of parts, for example? I think like, that's solves it. If, yeah, I'm wondering if, but I'm wondering if that can be part of like with each item comes a instruction manual, right? Like what comes with it and what we expect from from, from it when it, re- when it gets returned. It's the same thing like I want, how do you use these meeting rooms posted in the meeting rooms? It's in the bag. We expect these things to be returned in this yeah. condition. Um, and we've used those before with like those early reader books that came in like those zip pouches. And you said mm-hmm. all of these books need to be returned as part of this. Um, yeah. I think and I do think, I think this will help the way. staff too, because <laughs> the, I watched them get one back and they were like, I don't know if I have all the parts they were trying to, but they were. You know, and especially are, for this, like if you had something with that with the, with the item, then the you know the librarians would also have a copy of that at the desk, right? It wouldn't the only copy wouldn't be with the item. You would have right. a copy of it, so you would know. Well, you could sticker the on the chessboard. You right. need X. This needs to be returned. You know, yeah. there's some depending on the packaging we're giving it out in that would help. But Sam, does that seem like something that we can? Do I know that's a items? task. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Several of the the things that are out there have either on the packaging or in the the record in Asabet what the contents of the of the thing are. So, okay. like if it has a power cable and a USB cable and all that kind of stuff, it's it's usually on the packaging somewhere that it includes that. Um, you know, or and it's also in the record. I made sure that it was in the the record in Asabet in the description of it. Okay, you know. The iPad comes with this cord and, you know, this, this power brick and, you know, the camera comes with this cable and, you know, so yeah. that's all in there and the instruction book and yeah. 
Is that something that could you also add that bit about if there was a specific thing that that needed to be brought back and like special instructions for what you do before you return it? Is that a place where you could put that also? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I don't, uh, then the other question is what happens, okay, just to, if something's um, returned in, let, let's, you borrowed the sewing machine and the needle breaks, right? Or not necessarily holding the person responsible for breaking a needle because that potentially happens, but how are we going to make sure that that is reported correctly and, you know, everything goes through the right channels there, right? You know, you're not so, necessarily expecting them to return it in good working order in that case, right? But you would want to know that something went wrong. Right. So two things. One, usually when we have something that has multiple parts to it, it's labeled and the staff check every part of, you know, to make sure, you know, like things aren't damaged and everything's in there and all the parts are in there. Second, usually patrons are pretty good at telling us you know they usually feel pretty guilty about it so that they'll they'll let us know if they broke something um or if a piece is broken so there's you know kind of two levels there where the either staff will notice or honestly usually patron self-report it's very rare that we get a patron that just you know gives us something or drops it in the, the book drop and you know runs away and never comes back to the library you know that sort of thing so it's it uh, I don't. I. I think it. It would work like any other item we have. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I can assure you those needles will break. Given that I oh just went gosh. through a sleeve of mine trying to do my curtains. So. Yeah. Been there. <laughs> You're lucky if it doesn't go through your finger. That's really the. the that's the problem. Yeah. Um, okay. So I. Um, given what Mark you had just mentioned. Um, do we want to leave this policy off of approving tonight and give it a couple of months to kind of um work through and see see how it's going or do we want to or do we want to approve it i would say to approve it and then revisit it in a couple of months to see what needs to be changed i agree with mark i think we need to get this in the librarian's yeah. hands so they have the policy to work Good with point. okay so uh it, do, does anyone else have any other comments or questions as it is now okay if not i think we can maybe approve all four policies yeah. A motion to approve all four policies as written and amended to date. Second. That's Chris seconding. I was I was pausing to give you a chance, Chris. You're... There you are, Mark. Why don't you start then? Yes. Wendy. Yes. Chris. Yes. Kimberly. Yes. And I am also a yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good, you. Good job editing these guys. Um, I do think the other one I want to come back to in a few months is the meeting room. And I will try to look at the version and just see what some of the concerns were for that I've heard about them. So maybe we can put that on to a future sure. revisit. Um, I'd be happy to work on that with you. That'd be great. Given, given what we just talked about, maybe we can make um, library usage. Yeah, can we make that sooner? Can we do library usage and volunteer policy since we just talked to Declan? That's, yeah, let's do those next month and. Okay, Mark, you've already reviewed the volunteer policy so you don't have to do that one. Oh, good. <laughs> Also, I, I did them all this summer. It's not like I'm doing them like tonight. I reviewed them like this past summer. So they're just ready. I mean, you didn't yeah. write them all four of these in a minute to send to Mark after the last meeting. I could not send them to you for like a week if that makes you feel better. No, no. No, I wouldn't actually send it to him right now. <laughs> I would like well, you I to send it right now. I was just going to say it's just scary efficient. That's all. <laughs> I was just going to say, given that I'm not doing minutes anymore, if anybody needs any support from me, let me know. Happy cool. to proofread, review, whatever awesome. you need me to do. Actually, um, Kimberly, can you send me the dr working draft of the meeting room policy that we have, yeah. just so I can see it? Okay, so I'll mark it up yeah. with the things I have some questions on. Yeah. Okay. Um, however, the <laughs> tongue-in-cheek 
someone asked me if they could let the meeting rooms be used by an eight-year-old, but our children in the library policy covers that and no, they can't without supervision. <laughs> so <laughs> good. Yep. All right. So new business, we have our employee COVID policy, which we discussed at the last meeting um, that um, CDC had changed. When we originally last summer set an employee COVID policy, the town didn't actually have an employee COVID policy yet. And so we proactively did um, addressed it. But since then, the town has been, HR is now up and running and are taking care of that. And um, with the continuing changes, I think this is best suited for HR to continue um, doing. And I don't know if our policy is needed at this point. So um, I was hoping we could vote to rescind this and continue to have this be taken care of through SAM and HR. Any we'll make a motion we rescind the COVID policy. Second. All right, Kimberly. Oh, yes, sorry. I think you just said second. <laughs> also, I have to vote. Yes. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> yes. Wendy. Yes. Chris. Yes. And I am a yes. Okay. okay. So any other business? Everyone speak at once, please. Uh, Sam, do we have the cleaning situations straightened out yet for the library? Uh, Is there anything no. we should, can do to help? Yeah. Um, as far as I know, they're still waiting to put it out to bid or uh, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> um, if you want to reach out to Joe, uh, Joe, I think Joe's the one who's handling it and maybe ask okay. him what, what the update is. And how is snow removal going with the library? Are we, what are we keeping clear and what are we not? And, you know, is the patio being shoveled? Is the steps down, you know, all of that? Or is there a, pl uh, a plan? So usually George does it. Um, unfortunately, the last snow storm, Joe, uh, George was not available. So I did it. Um, and then highway does the, the parking lot. Um, and they're supposed, I think they're also supposed to do the sidewalks, but it, it didn't happen. So I did it. Um, but usually it's George and George has a, a snow shovel to, um, a, 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 yeah, a, a motorized, um, it's not a, yeah, it's like a snow shovel thing that's motorized and he, um, takes care of the patio. So it's, it's usually falls on him. Okay. Um, we might want to, you might want to check with them to see if it would be worth having one that was kept in our building too, because I assume it's a. So yeah, he, we thought about that, but so right now he keeps it in his building and brings it over the, the night before we know it's going to snow because there's not really a place in our building to, to keep it. It won't fit in one of the janitor's closets. Mm -mm. No, there's okay. other stuff in there. Okay. Okay. Anyone else have something? I have a couple, but I don't want to jump in ahead of others. Okay. Um, Sam, I was just curious. I know that we've been through this like hard push to open the library and things have been very busy since. So I understand. Um, but I was just wondering if you've been having a chance to have regular staff meetings or have another staff meeting since the building opened to answer questions, make sure they're all trained on the building itself and new policies, things like that. Yeah, so I do plan on having uh, another staff meeting. I was waiting on getting Catherine on board okay. to, to do one. Yeah. I would love to hear those happening every, I don't know, month, six weeks, quarterly, something in that range. Um, yeah, that's not, uh, maybe quarterly, not every month. Um, it, it, it's financially, it's not really possible. And also just coordinating everybody and plus, since we open at 10 now, it's going to be a little harder because we used to do it on Tuesday or Thursday mornings before we opened at one. So figuring out how we're going to have a meeting where everyone can attend, maybe we'll have to do um, staggered meetings or something like that. Do you do a hybrid meeting? Well, you mean like uh, with Zoom? That's all we did <laughs> over the last okay. few years. But um, 
I did, I did, I just getting talking to some staff, I do get the impression that they actually need to be in the building to how does the lights work in this room or like, you know, like some of the things are hands on. Um, but those list of questions are mm-hmm. um, yeah. maybe not always addressable when everyone's busy on the fly. Right. Yeah. It's, and it's, yeah. Anyway, it's, <laughs> it's being addressed. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for holding meetings. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Um, and then, so just one of the things I would love for us as library trustees and library department, um, in general is those, some collaborations, like I loved here. I think I saw a cultural council program on the calendar for the coming weeks. Um, the seed library is kind of falling onto us now, but it used to be a collaboration, um, and talking to Liz in EHS, she had some ideas for like book clubs or other collaborations kind of thing too. Those kind of like cross-departmental, I think those cross-departmental collaborations are really important, especially as we try to um, continue our advocating for the library. Like the more bridges we build, the better our standing is in town anyway. Um, so I heard there was a COA book club idea floated. I'm not sure how if that's happening or how we can help support getting something like that going or any of those programs. Yeah. So I've been, um, Julie F has been talking about whether or not she wants to take that on. So I, I do plan to speak to her about that. She did mention she might be interested in doing that in a a collaboration with um, COA. Okay. Is that working with hours, budgets and stuff like that? Or is that, um, I'm not sure. I, I would have to look at the, the budget. I haven't had time to um, take a look at whether or not it works within the budget. Okay. Um, I appreciate putting some eyes and time into that just because I do think these kind of things are important, especially as we advocate for the library to stay on people's radars. Mm-hmm. So, um, And then I had one random question looking at the library the other day with the snow on the new furniture that no one's really sat in yet outdoors. Do we need to get um, furniture covers for the outdoor furniture for the winter months? Yeah, most likely. Do we need to, can that be in the budget for the building or does that need to come out of our budget? We can put it in the building budget. Okay. Cool. I would love to see them protected so that we're not, um, destroyed before you get to enjoy them. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Anyone else have some other business? So um, just following up on what Katrina said uh, on the COA program, um, if, if there's a budget issue that we can't do it, let's work that out and find the budget, you know, come and ask for money and we'll figure out how, how to make that work. Um, My, my question is how is the library doing with the sledding hill and traffic? Is there been any issues related to that? Um, you know, with, um, I know in the, well, if you go back far enough when the back door wasn't open, there was a lot of, tra- you know, traffic coming in uh, the library. I just wondered how we're handling sledding traffic or if it hasn't been an issue or, um, or if there's things we can do to make it better. You mean as far as the kids coming into the library after they, they go down well, the Well, if the, yeah, if there's, I mean, well, we've had, yeah, we've always had the kids wanting to run into the library to use the restrooms and things, but I didn't know if generally, you know, if we're having either a lot of foot traffic or different traffic, different traffic patterns than we're expecting, or, you know, um, if there's just something we didn't think about, um, you know, the, oh, we need to get more mats here or mats there or things, you know, just if the, how we're handling the sledding traffic, if it has been an issue or, or the library has been, you know, more, if we see the uptick in, you know, parents are hanging out in the library with a coffee machine or, you know, I just didn't know how it's going with it. I, and if you had any feel. Um, I haven't seen anything one way or another. Um, we don't have, we have a coffee machine, but we're not allowing patrons to drink anything in the, in the library because of the mask mandate. Um, so as far as I can tell, it hasn't impacted the library negatively in any way. Okay. 
The bathrooms are still by the door. Yeah. yeah. Which is helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do we have a plan if the mask mandate, if the town lifts the mask mandate, what's the status? What are we doing? Um, we're just following whatever the town does and and the staff's all okay with whatever's going on or? Sam, how is the staff feeling about COVID? Honestly, no one really talks about it. I mean, there have been That's staff good. that have, you know, had scares with it and we just kind of deal with it as it goes along, but it's not something that's really even talked about that much. It's not omnipresent anymore. Right. Which is crazy given our rates just went through there. Now that we're vaccinated. Um, so the staff has a supply of KN95 masks from the town and you can get more, I believe. Did you get them from Joe or the administrator's office? Do you remember? Yeah, the TA's office. The TA's office. Um, yeah, so the town bought better quality masks for staff to have access to. Um, and... What I don't want is the staff to have to be the mass police if we go differently from the town. So in my opinion, we should follow the town. And then if we need put ma you know, masks accessible like we've had out for people if they want them and when they walk in. I don't know if we still have a stash for patrons. We do. Okay. okay. The same thing. Okay. And, 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 People can disagree with me, but <laughs> I think it would be a hard, um, we'd be against the grain. It would be very, it'd be more difficult for this staff. We have the HEPA filters. Those could be run. Um, we have a good ventilation system. <laughs> Thanks to the new library. That's awesome. Also, um, and rates always, are coming down. Also, you can always choose to wear a mask. So it's not like yes. you're, it's, everyone's going to make you not wear the mask. <laughs> yeah, I fully support any mat, any anybody who wants to wear a mask, patron or um, staff member. Is, and I'm is, sure there'll be discomfort on both sides going forward. Is there discussion from the town that to, to lift that? I haven't heard that. The, there is discussion in the town about when that should be rescinded. Yes. So interesting. I think the current regulations today. through February 28th. Um, so the board of health will have to act before that if they want to extend it. But um, the high school is going mask flex, so choice optional. Um, I think they can start next week because they required pool testing, so they can do pool testing and then start choosing whether they wear a mask or not. So they got a waiver for the high school. So this is where we are, guys. <laughs> like vaccines, boosters. I think we've, we've talked to the staff about, you know, most, I think they're all vaccinated. We've encouraged boosters. We've gotten the masks. We have the HEPA filters. So I just, we do want to protect them for sure. Yeah. All right, everyone, patrons too, but. In terms of, um, I think our library programming would follow the town. The town's programming would probably follow the town's regulation um but in terms of like private groups borrowing rooms i would assume they would set their own decision about masks use like girl scouts still requires masks at this point so or at least they used to um for indoor gatherings for that group so those community groups may have different expectations but. all right did i miss anything no, I did not. <laughs> Thank you for keeping me online. Um, so at this point, we have made it through our agenda. Um, I do want to touch base that I, I emailed all of you about this, but to state it on um, a public meeting, it would be, I would like to start doing hybrid meetings if we can get figure out the technology in the next month. So um, to make sure that the People who want to participate from home can, but can also hear and see. Um, but it would be great to be in a room with you guys to have these, some of these discussions. So um, 
is everyone comfortable with that? Okay. So let's try to do our next meeting in person um, and hybrid so that people who can't participate can still call in, in person can still call in. So the next meeting is set for March 3rd, 2022. We'll have to have, figure out how to keep the library door unlocked. <laughs> yes, that, no. Wait, when does the library close on Thursdays? Eight, Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. So yes, we will have to figure out how to keep mm -hmm. the door unlocked. Well, that's something I can, for board meetings, that's something that IT can, can do. It's, it's ahead of time. Written, right. If you have a time, but I can just ask, or I can do it, actually. Can, I was going to say, do we have control on that? Yeah, I can do it from my phone. Okay. Cool. Things we are learning. Yeah. Okay. okay, guys. All right, move to close the meeting. Second. Second. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> Should we give that one to Wendy? <laughs> Wendy can have that one. Okay. So, Kimberly. Yes. <laughs> Chris. Yes. Wendy. Yes. Mark. Yes. And I am a yes. So we'll see you in a hybrid meeting on March 3rd.